you hear that? That's a weird sound. Anyway, <laughs> good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to continue to read this book, Our World in Pictures, Countries of the World. And tonight's continent is going to be Africa. So let's just dive right in and read facts about every single country in Africa. Here we go. Starting off with, let me slide this down here so you can see all of it. Morocco. It says, Morocco has both a Mediterranean and an Atlantic coast and sandy desert dunes. Its cities are famous for their walled, maze-like Medina quarters, while traditional villages and ski resorts nestle in its high mountains. There's a little flag fact about its flag. Flag fact. It says the red on the flag stands for strength and bravery. Now, is this tajines or tahines? Because it kind of sounds like tahine, like the hot tahine. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's tajine. Anyway, let me know in the comments. The special lidded clay pot and the tasty stew of meat and vegetables slowly cooked inside it are both called tajine. Tajine. Looks very delicious. Valley of Roses. The Mgun Valley in the Atlas Mountains is home to the wild roses of Morocco. Up to 4,400 tons of roses are grown here every year for the global perfume industry. There's the Atlas Mountains. It says, The Atlas Mountains span 1,600 miles from Morocco across Algeria to Tunisia. Speaking of which, let's learn about Algeria. Carefully slide this. Kind of a big book. Make sure you can see it as much as possible. Algeria the largest country in Africa and sits between the Mediterranean Sea and the Sahara Desert. It has vast deposits of oil and natural gas and is among the world's biggest producers of dates. There's another little flag fact. It says the crescent moon and stars a symbol of the Islamic faith. And here's a sweet little desert fox. The fennec fox lives in the Sahara Desert. This nocturnal hunter uses its large bat-like ears to give off body heat and keep cool in the desert. And here is the Martyr's Memorial. This massive concrete monument has stood tall over the city of Algiers since 1982. It commemorates Algeria's independence from France in 1962. There's Algiers right up there in the map. And next we have Tunisia. Although a small country that is largely desert, Tunisia also has a rich farmland where cereal crops, olive trees, and fruits grow in abundance. Traditional foods and crafts are sold at colorful city markets called souks. Major mosque. The center of Muslim worship in the capital city of Tunis is the Zatuna Mosque, with its 144-foot minaret towering over the rooftops of the old part of the city. There's Tunis right here on the map, and it's talking about El Gem right here, Roman mosaic. Tunisia was part of the Roman Empire and is full of relics such as this owl mosaic in El Gem. Popular sport. Soccer is hugely popular in Tunisia. The boy wearing the striped shirt supports Club African, a top league team in Tunis. And next we're going to look at Libya. There we go. Libya is dominated by the sands of the Sahara Desert. Early people created fine rock art inlaid with some 10,000 years ago. Inlaid some 10,000 years ago. 
and ancient Greek and Roman ruins dot the coast. The country is rich in oil and gas. Here we can see Tuareg riders. Tuaregs are nomadic people who live in the Sahara Desert. Their traditions and folklore are kept alive, including this camel race through the desert dunes at the Ghat Festival. There's a little flag fact over here. The colors stand for Libya's main regions, Fezzan, Cyrenaica, and Tripolitania. Early art. In the Tadrart Akakis Mountains, near the city of Ghat, prehistoric rock art features wild animals, camels, and seen here, human hunters. Ghat is right here on the map, right in the desert. Let's see what's next. Oh, big one. Next, we're going to look at Egypt. Lying in the northeast corner of Africa, Egypt is more than 90% desert. Most Egyptians live in the valley of the fertile Nile River. Thousands of years ago, Egypt was home to one of the world's first great civilizations. Let's read all these little facts over here by the big pyramids. Geography. Egypt consists of vast swaths of desert, green river valleys, mountains, and Red Sea and Mediterranean coastline. History Egypt's ancient civilization lasted for around 3,000 years. From the mid-600s, Egypt was ruled by Muslim Arabs. Culture Everyday life is largely centered on the family and Muslim traditions. Egypt also has a thriving media and arts scene. Natural wonders. The Nile is the world's longest river. It flows over a distance of more than 4,100 miles. Wildlife. Jackals. Fennec foxes and scorpions are desert dwellers. Vipers and cobras are sometimes seen in the Nile Valley. Food and drink. Egyptian cuisine blends spices, lentils, and rice to make a variety of dishes often served with minced or grilled lamb. So let's read all these cool facts. Let's start up here. On the ball. Egyptian super striker Mohamed Salah is a two time winner of the African Footballer of the Year award. He also plays for England's Liverpool Football Club. City of Minarets. Built amid ancient cities, Egypt's teeming capital, Cairo, is more than 1,000 years old. Its historic center has spectacular Islamic architecture. Showcased in the 14th century Sultan Hassan Mosque. Sweet fruits. Dates have been cultivated and eaten in Egypt since ancient times. More than 15% of the world's dates are grown here, making Egypt one of the top producers. Magnificent treasures. More than 5,000 years ago, a great civilization was growing along the banks of the Nile River. We know about life in ancient Egypt from the extraordinary discoveries of archaeologists, such as this well-preserved coffin for an elderly woman named Nesmutat's Nero. <laughs> Sailing on the Nile Egypt depends on the Nile River for water for farming. For thousands of years, it was also the country's main transportation highway. Today, tourists travel on it in wooden sailboats called Felucas. Here on the map, it's pointing out the Libyan desert, and that it's a mostly rocky expanse, covering two-thirds of Egypt. And then we have the Nile Delta 
nutrient-rich soil that's good for farming. Egyptian Acacia. This flowering tree grows widely in Egypt. In ancient times, the wood from it was used to make boats and furniture. Diving in the Red Sea. I know this is some people's biggest phobia, but this is one of my wildest dreams. I would love to swim that close to a big old shark. Divers flock to the Red Sea to enjoy the underwater world of shipwrecks, corals, and thriving marine life, including oceanic white tip sharks. Lantern displays. During the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, Colorful lanterns called fanus are put up in homes and public places across Egypt. The shipping shortcut. The Suez Canal is a 120 mile waterway that connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea, built by the French in the 1860s to allow a direct route between Europe and Asia is now owned by Egypt. Watch out for the ever free coming by. Mysterious tombs. One of the seven wonders of the world, the pyramids of Giza in Cairo are more than 4,500 years old. They were built as giant tombs for ancient Egyptian pharaohs, who were their rulers. The largest is made from 2.3 going to learn about Mali. Between dry desert and tropical savanna, Mali is a large, flat country. The Niger River, which runs through it, is used for fishing, transportation, and trade. Mali's main exports are gold and cotton. Let's see what we've got here. Let's start over here. The Togan Dama. The Dogon people of Mali create elaborate masks and costumes for the Dama dance ceremony, which is held to honor deceased village elders. Alright, sorry for that very loud car, they're gone now. Let's see what else we have for Mali. Patterned textiles. Bogoladvini is a traditional Malian hand-woven cotton fabric. Its bold colored patterns are created with natural dyes made from river mud and local plants. The precious manuscripts. Timbuktu is home to scholarly manuscripts on subjects such as medicine, art, and religion that date back to the 13th century. That's where Timbuktu is located. The Great Mosque of Janae. The towering mosque at Janae creates a spectacular backdrop to a weekly market where traders sell food, fuel, and household goods. Next, we're going to look at slide this over so you can see all of it. Mauritania, dominated by the Sahara Desert, Mauritania is a hot arid country on the Atlantic coastline of Western Africa. Many people in this vast nation are farmers or herders. Fishing, mining, and oil production are key industries. Thriving Metropolis Just a coastal village in 1960, Nuwakshot, I think that's how you say has expanded rapidly to become the nation's main city with wide boulevards and impressive buildings. And that's where it is on the map, right on the ocean. Desert Rock. A singer, poet, and musician, Noura Mint Simali performs Mauritanian folk music blended with modern rock. Awesome. My cat just woke up and now he's eating his wet food, if you can hear that in the background, I apologize. But next we're going to learn about Niger. This Saharan nation is named after the Niger River, which
which passes through its capital city, Niamey. In rural areas, nomads herd and trade cattle, sheep, goats, and camels. They live off and sell milk, meat, and hides. Peanut Pyramids Peanuts are a major crop in Niger. Sacks of peanuts are piled high to make pyramids, symbols of prosperity. Communal Wells As there is little rainfall in Niger, nomadic desert people rely on groundwater from wells. Some local tribes unite to build wells shared by the community. Next we have Chad. Chad is located at the heart of North Africa, surrounded by six other nations. The Sahara Desert lies in the north of the country. Most people live in the tropical south, where they farm the land. Here's the Anadi Massif. It's so beautiful. Over the centuries, erosion by wind and water sculpted dramatic rock formations in the sandstone plateau in northeast Chad. Prehistoric paintings. Ancient rock art, including hundreds of drawings of camels and cattle, is found in the Tibesti Mountains. High-level racing. The two blue herders of the Tibesti Mountains compete in camel races to find the most skilled writers. There are talks about in Jemaine, a port on the Cherry River, the largest city in the country and its capital. Next we have Eritrea, a mountainous country situated on the Red Sea in northeastern Africa. Eritrea takes its name from the Greek for Red Sea. Eritrea gained independence from Ethiopia in 1993, though conflict continued until 2018. There's some prickly pear, despite its prickly exterior. This cactus plant grown in Eritrea has sweet orange or red fruit that can be eaten raw. Two-towered landmarks. Sitting on a hill in the capital, Asmara, is the colorful Enda Mariam Cathedral. Christianity and Islam are the two major religions practiced in Eritrea. Holiday Islands Many small islands make up the beautiful Dalak Archipelago off the coast of Eritrea. Tourist boats and scuba divers visit clear waters and coral reefs. And next we have Sudan. Sudan has had an unsettled past, and in 2011 it split into two nations. Its population is diverse, with many different ethnic groups. Sudan's capital, Khartoum, is the meeting point of the Blue Nile and White Nile rivers. Dancing dervishes. Islam is the largest religion in Sudan. Every Friday at Omdurman, near Khartoum, Muslim mystics called dervishes come together to chant and dance. There's Omdurman near Khartoum. Walls of sand. Huge dust storms called haboobs often sweep through Sudan. Sand carried from the Sahara Desert blows across the land at high speed. And then we have South Sudan. After a long civil war, South Sudan voted to become independent from Sudan in 2011. The country has a more African feel than largely Arab Sudan. Its grassy plains and swamps are havens for wildlife. Sudanese cuisine. Farmers grow a variety of grains, including corn, sorghum, and millet. 
these are used in popular local dishes. Cattle keepers. The Dinka people in South Sudan lead a traditional herding life. Mboma National Park. Among Africa's largest national parks, Boma provides a grassland habitat for antelope, elephants, giraffes, and lions. Let's see what we're checking out next. Next, we're going to look at Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a country in the Horn of Africa, dramatically split by the Great Rift Valley in the Afar region. One of the oldest cultures in the world, it is the only part of Africa that was never colonized. Ethiopia is where the coffee plant comes from, and coffee is grown in its mountainous highlands. It is the country's main export. Let's see what we've got here. Bubbling hotspot. Oh, hello. Apologies, my cat just came to harass me for snacks. Bubbling hot spot. A sizzling temperature of 49 degrees Celsius is not unheard of in the low lying Danakil Depression. It has volcanic rocks, a lava lake, and hot green ponds such as Dalal that are highly acidic. It says you right there, right there. Let's see, this is gelada, I think. Oh, interesting marking. The Ethiopian highlands are the home of grass-eating gelada baboons. Males display a red heart-shaped patch on their chest to attract a mate. Pastoral people. The Mercy people live as nomads in the Omo River Valley. They raise cattle for meat and milk. The African Union Headquarters. The African Union an organization that promotes cooperation on the continent has its headquarters in Addis Ababa. It says right here that it means new flower. It's right there. Misab baskets. Women weave these flat bottomed baskets in brightly colored patterns. The lidded baskets are used to store food and as tables to eat off. Next, we're going to Djibouti. The small country of Djibouti has a wild landscape of coral reefs, volcanoes, and salt lakes. Most of the population lives in the nation's coastal capital, Djibouti. This growing port city is located on one of the world's busiest shipping routes. Thankfully, Djibouti is one of those countries where the capital city is the same as the country name. It's Djibouti City. So easy when you're memorizing capitals. I'm very thankful for countries like Djibouti. Let's read about the Saline Lake. Salt slabs are extracted from Lake Asal, the world's largest salt reserves. At 508 feet below sea level, it is the lowest point in Africa. Camel Caravan. Groups of camels are used to transport heavy loads to markets for sale. And some sweet whale sharks. Djibouti's coral reefs are the habitat of whale sharks. Scuba diving with the huge, harmless sharks is a popular tourist attraction. Another dream of mine. Next we have Somalia. Somalia runs along the eastern coast of the Horn of Africa. The landscape is hot and dry. Some believe this country was once the fabled land of Punt, an ancient kingdom where goods such as gold, myrrh, and frankincense were traded. The trading port. Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, was a port city on the Indian Ocean. It's one of Africa's most densely populated urban areas. Wooden headrest.
Somali nomads use headrests for sleeping. These are carved out of wood and painted with intricate patterns. Traditional dance. Danto is a traditional dance performed to local music by groups of Somalis. Let's see what's next. Next we're going to check out Senegal. Senegal has grassy savannas in its arid north and lush rainforests in the south. Mainland Africa's westernmost point is near the capital, Dakar. Music, dance, and wrestling reflect its rich heritage. Let's see what we've got for Senegal. Fighting climate change. As part of the Great Green Wall Project, to restore fertility to Africa's dry Sahel region, Senegal has planted 11.4 million trees in its northern half. The African Renaissance Monument. And that's like a person. That's how big this is. This huge 160 foot tall monument was erected in 2010 to mark the 50th anniversary of Senegal's independence from France. Mmm, spicy stew. The traditional mafé stew mixes tomatoes, peppers, and peanuts with beef or lamb to create its distinctive spicy flavor. Yum, yum. Pink Lake. Lake Redba, near Dakar, gets its pink color from algae that thrive on the high salt levels in its water. Salt crystals pile up on its shores. There's some young Jola drummers. Cute. He's being very serious, isn't he? The Jola people of southern Senegal play traditional drums called Bougarabu at local ceremonies and celebrations. Next, we're going to learn about Cape Verde. Lying far off the coast of northwestern Africa, Cape Verde, or Cabo Verde, is made up of ten islands and many smaller islands. Its landscape features forested hillsides, beaches, and active volcanoes. It is also famous for its unique music known as Morna. Here is Pico do Foco, at 9,281 feet tall, Pico do Foco is the highest peak in Cape Verde. This active volcano last erupted in 2015. Here is Mindelo. The port city of Mindelo is surrounded by dramatic mountains. It is known for its deep natural harbor of fine Special Harbor, Fine Beach, the colorful carnivals. It's right there on this little island up here. But here's Praia, the capital city of Santiago Island. And next, we're going to learn about the Gambia, a long, narrow country that follows the Gambia River. The Gambia is enclosed by Senegal. River banks are home to hundreds of different bird species, and it has beautiful beaches along its tiny Atlantic coast. Here's an Abyssinian roller. So beautiful. Forests and savannas are home to roller birds. Oh, rooster chimed in there for that. They take their name from the thrilling midair rolls performed by males to attract females. I think rooster's jealous. Wrestling. Just like in Senegal, in the Gambia, traditional wrestling is a huge sport as well as a cultural event. And the stone circles of Senegambia. If you know me, you know I'm a big stone circle nerd. I love them. They're so cool. And these are some interesting ones. Stone circles dating back to the 3rd century BCE are spread across the Gambia River region. These are so interesting because the newest circle was built in the 16th century and that 
it's so recent for a stone circle, but people still can't figure out its purpose or um, who actually built it even. Next, they're going to Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, the Lion Mountains, takes its name from the dramatic range behind the capital, Freetown. It has some of West Africa's highest peaks and stunning beaches. The biggest industries are farming and mining. Here's a big butterfly found in Sierra Leonean forests. The African giant swallowtail has a wingspan of up to nine inches. That is a big butterfly. Star of Sierra Leone discovered in a mine near Koidu in 1972. This huge diamond weighed 969 carats. It is the fourth largest gem quality diamond ever found. Support for survivors. In 1991 to 2002, a civil war ravaged Sierra Leone. A young girl who suffered but survived Maria Tsu Kamara set up a foundation in 2009 to support fellow victims. There's Freetown right there on the map. Large port city famous for its nearby beaches. And here's the cotton tree in Freetown. This mighty cotton tree has stood for centuries in the capital of Freetown. It is a protected, peaceful place with historical and spiritual the story of the cotton tree. If you don't know, Sierra Leone is the, or the first people who moved there, not the indigenous people, were freed slaves from the Americas, and they landed here and saw this tree and gathered around it and prayed for prosperity, and it's still there today. Very good story. Making gari. The staple food of Sierra Leone is cassava root ground into a a flour called gari, which is used in many different ways of cooking. Stone sculpture. Sierra Leone is rich in masks and other forms of traditional art. This carved stone head is thought to date from the 15th century. Next, we're going to Guinea-Bissau. Most of this small West African nation is a low-lying floodplain with tides reaching far inland. Its estuary landscape is lush with mangroves and national parks. Half of the population lives along the coast. Here's some cashews. Now, I love cashews. They're definitely my favorite nut next to macadamia. But did you know that's how cashews grow? That doesn't it look so unusual. The major export of Guinea-Bissau is cashew nuts seeds of the cashew tree. It's so bizarre looking. <laughs> Salt water hippopotamus. Very sweet. Very dangerous. On the island of Bubak in the Bijagos archipelago, saltwater hippopotamuses keep cool by wading in the sea and swamps. Bissau. A busy port in the vast Jeba River Estuary. Bissau was founded in 1687. The statue in front of the presidential palace is dedicated to two heroes of the independence. And next we have Guinea. Guinea's landscape ranges from inland savanna to coastal mangroves. And 22 rivers have their sources in its mountains. It is rich in bauxite a source of aluminum and gold, but most people are vegetable farmers. There's the gold deposits. The many gold mines in northeast Guinea near Siguri produce about 16.5 tons of gold every year. Here's Conakry, which again, I think that's how you pronounce it. On a long, narrow peninsula, the capital Conakry a large cargo port, as well as a smaller harbor full of colorful fishing boats. And here's a western green mamba. He's saying hello. 
pillow, spending most of its time in the trees of Guinea's forests. This agile snake is shy, but moves fast, and its venom is deadly. So cute, though. <laughs> Next, we're going to the Ivory Coast. This West African nation, also known as Côte d'Ivoire, is one of the world's biggest cocoa exporters. Farming, fishing, and tourism are the main industries, thanks to vast areas of flat grassland and long sandy beaches. Soccer legend. Twice African footballer of the year, the nation's top goal scorer is Didier Drogba. He has used his international profile to highlight critical issues in Ivory Coast and the rest of Africa. The Basilica of Our Lady of Peace. If you've seen my video on Ivory Coast, you know that this church gave me quite a headache while researching. Built in the 1980s in the capital of Yamoussoukro, this huge Catholic basilica is topped by a dome that is 489 feet tall. Next we have Liberia, which is a long one. There we go. Getting its name, Freedom, when it was settled by African Americans freed from slavery. Liberia has been independent since 1848. It elected the first female president in Africa, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Let's learn about Liberia. She's making some fufu. Fufu is popular in Liberian and West African cuisine. Served with stew, it is made from cassava roots, carefully prepared to form a white, sticky mash. Coastal capital. I can see right there. On the Atlantic coast, Monrovia is Liberia's capital and largest city, and also a major port. One third of the total population lives here. Look at this very special spoon. It's got feet. Ceremonial Wakernia ladles have been handcrafted for centuries. Carved out of wood in ornate designs, they are made to reward individual generosity. Here is Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Arriving in Liberia in 1829, this African-American merchant became the country's first president in 1848. Here's a woodland kingfisher. This species of kingfisher is recognized by its blue feathers, bright beak, and fast flight through the forests of Liberia. And some surfing. Growing community of surfers ride the waves off Robertsport, a coastal town considered among the best surf spots in Africa. There it is on the map. And before we turn the page, let's learn about Burkina Faso. Flat and surrounded by six countries, Burkina Faso is a farming nation. Its landscape is dominated by savanna. Most people live on the Central Plateau. Its large biannual Arts and Crafts Fair attracts artists from many African countries. Here's the Tour de Faso. Burkina Faso has played host to this 10-day bicycle race since 1987. Covering about 800 miles, it is the African stage of an international cycling competition. And here's some traditional architecture. Many villages in Burkina Faso feature traditional granaries. They are built on circular wooden bases and have straw-topped roofs. Let's see where we're going next. Next, we're going to check out Ghana. The modern nation of Ghana in West Africa is named after a great medieval trading empire that existed in the region until the 13th century. 
today it is one of the fastest growing economies in Africa, thanks to cocoa, gold, wood, and oil. Here's some kente cloth. Garments made from brightly colored kente cloth woven in distinctive patterns were originally worn only by kings. Ceremonial drums. A set of oversized phantom from drums symbolic of Ghana's historic royalty is played at state ceremonies. Here's a big Ku Jackson. In 2016, teenage swimmer Abe Ku Jackson competed in the 50 meter freestyle event, becoming one of the first two Ghanaian Olympic swimmers. Beautiful ritual mask. Elaborate carved masks such as this face mask made by the Ashanti people are worn to represent the spirits of ancestors in ritual dances. There's some coffin art. Coffin making has become an art form with unique designs. <laughs> this one is a bird, if you can't tell. And down here is Labadi Beach. The busiest beach in Ghana is close to the capital city of Accra. Locals flock to Labadi for the spectacular sea and sunshine. Next, we're going to Togo. On Africa's west coast, Togo is a narrow country with a short coastal strip. Sandy beaches dominate the coastline against a backdrop of rolling hillsides. The capital, Lome, is a thriving coastal city. There it is. Up here is a West African tree by Bru. He doesn't look as friendly as the, the mamba on the other page. Green scaly skin camouflages this venomous snake in the leafy undergrowth of Togo's forests. Teaching science. The MoLab project is a mobile laboratory Molab in Togo, designed to help children learn about science and technology via activities and experiments. And here's Takienta houses. In the Kutamaku region, the Botamariba people build thatched tower houses. And next, we're going to Benin. Mountains forests and beaches make up the varied landscape of Benin. Historically, this African nation was known for master craftspeople who excelled at shaping wood, ivory, and silver. Like this. It's really cute. Fawn silverwork. During the 18th and 19th centuries, the Fawn people of Benin shaped silver into exquisite objects such as this buffalo. And here's Angelique Kijo. This celebrated Beninese singer is popular throughout Africa and has won three Grammy Awards for her musical talent. Here is Dantokpa Market. The biggest open-air market in West Africa is held at Cotonou. On sale is an eclectic mix of goods from wood carving it's a new right there near Porto Novo on the banks of the Yewa River. Let's see where we're going next. It's finally, I thought we would do this country a few pages ago, but here it is. It's Nigeria. Let's read about it. Nigeria has the largest population and richest economy of any African nation. The country's oil industry centered around Port Harcourt in the Niger Delta, the Niger Delta, it depends on how you want to pronounce it, contributes to its wealth. Half of the population live in urban areas. Lagos, Africa's biggest city, sits on the coast, while the smaller capital, Abuja, was built inland in the 1980s. You can see Abuja is right there. The purpose built capital right in the middle of Nigeria. And there's Lagos, the 
largest city in Africa. But let's read about the four-horned chameleon. Native to Nigeria and neighboring Cameroon, this chameleon can be recognized by the four prominent horns on its snout. Its striking green skin allows it to effortlessly blend in with forest foliage. There's some Benin bronzes. The historic kingdom of Benin, in what is now Nigeria, was known for its skilled metal workers. More than 1,000 bronze plaques and sculptures once decorated the royal palace in Benin City. And there's the Oba. I did a whole video on the kingdom of Benin. So fascinating, and they made so many bronze sculptures for their opa. It was a really interesting kingdom. Still around today, the opa is still around. Digital media. Nigeria has hundreds of newspapers, TV networks, and radio stations, but new media, accessed by laptops and cell phones, are taking over, especially in the cities. Here is Hakim Olajuwon. Nigerian-born basketball star Hakeem Olajuwon played in the U.S. National Basketball Association, or the NBA, from 1984 to 2002 and secured his place in the prestigious Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Basketball's not really my sport. Fun to watch, but I don't really know much about the athletes. Nollywood. Nicknamed Nollywood. The prolific Nigerian movie industry produces more than 1,500 movies each year, including the 2018 drama Lionheart. Let's read about this mega city. Known for business, industry, and shipping, Lagos is also a vibrant cultural hub with many universities. Set around a lagoon, it sprawls across several islands and has two enormous cargo ports. She's making some jollof rice. Traditional West African jollof rice is a tasty one-pot dish made of cooked meat, rice, tomatoes, onions, peppers, and spices. Jollof is often sold by vendors in marketplaces. There's some palm oil. Oil extracted from the fruit of the African oil palm tree, oil palm tree is used for cooking in many parts of Africa. Nigeria ranks among the world's largest palm oil producers. Nigerian beets. From the legendary Fela Kuti to today's Afrobeat stars such as Burna Boy, Nigerian music is big worldwide. The Durb Durbar Festival, I think. Celebrated in northern Nigerian cities such as Kano, this annual Islamic festival marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan and is known for its colorful parades of horse riders. That's a really beautiful decoration for that horse, costumes for the horse. Anyway, let's move on to Equatorial Guinea. Five islands and the mainland territory of Rio Muni make up Equatorial Guinea. An oil boom has fueled the building of a new capital, Ciudad de la Paz, in the rainforest. There's a flag fact. A silk cotton tree is featured in the national flag. Social baboon. The world's largest baboon species, mandrills, live in big hordes in the rainforests of this region, foraging for fruit and insects on the ground. It's, it's like, when you think of baboon, that's the face you picture, right? At least for me, I do. On the volcano's edge, the port city of Malabo, built on the rim of a volcano on Bioko Island, exports cocoa, wood, and coffee from its deep harbor. You can see it's right there. The island. Africa Cup Qualifier. Soccer is a popular sport in Equatorial Guinea. The national soccer team has twice qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations. 
Next is Sao Tome and Principe. The two mountainous islands of Sao Tome and Principe and their islets lie off the west coast of Africa. Their jungled slopes throng with endemic birds, such as the giant sunbird and tree frogs. Sao Tome, the bigger island, is home to the capital. Another one of those amazing countries. Easy to learn the capital because it's the same as the country's name. Here is Pico Cao Grande. The needle shaped Pico Cao Grande, meaning Great Dog Peak, is a landmark on Sao Tome Island. This towering volcanic rock stands 1,266 feet tall. So the lava just like erupted and then hardened. Chocolate islands, my kind of island. I love chocolate. Chocolate makers have set up cooperatives to grow cocoa on the islands, feeding a global appetite for high quality, fairly traded chocolate. Best kind of chocolate, fair trade chocolate. And next we have Cameroon. Goodness, that's a big frog. <laughs> Let's read it. Cameroon's varied landscapes include volcanic mountains, tropical rainforests, and desert. Called the Hinge of Africa for its location between West and Central Africa, the country's home to a diverse culture. Here are the Ekom Ekom waterfalls. The twin waterfalls of Ekom Ekom cascade 260 feet down the heart of Cameroon's lush rainforest near Nkong Samba. Gourd rattle. This local instrument, known as a sikari, produces a sound similar to a rattle. And let's read about this Goliath frog. Native to Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea, the world's largest frog can reach a length of three feet. Oh, I didn't know frogs could grow that big. It's so neat. Next, we're going to Gabon, a forested country on the west coast of Africa. Gabon is committed to preserving the natural environment. One tenth of the land is protected for its flora and fauna. Guardian figures. The Kota people of Gabon crafted ornate guardian figures known as Bulungulus to watch over the ancestral remains. Mambue Market. The huge Mambue Market in Libreville sells everything from fruit and vegetables to fabric printed in traditional styles. Protecting Wildlife. The Luango National Park south of Umbue provides sanctuary to many animals, including the African slender snouted crocodile. Next, going to the Central African Republic. Central African Republic is in the heart of Africa. Boom, right there. The country is crisscrossed with rivers, which are used to transport goods and people. In the northern savanna lies the Manovo Gunda St. Flores Park, home to elephants, cheetahs, and the rare black. The Ubangi River provides a plentiful source of food. Men use long nets to trap the fish while women take the catch to market. Fabulous feathers. These black crowned cranes are found in the wetlands of the country's north, including in Manovo Gunda St. Flores Park, south of Burao. Next we're going to Congo, or the Republic. About two-thirds of this Central African country is covered in dense rainforest. Most people live in towns and cities by rivers. The capital, Brazzaville, is just across the Congo River from Kinshasa, capital of neighboring Democratic Republic of the Congo. You can see it right there. Unique sport. Nzango is a high-energy sport, combining gymnastics with dance, in which two teams compete. It 
evolved from a playground game. That sounds fun. Endangered antelope. The bongo is a large African antelope with a bright striped coat and long horns. The destruction of its forest habitat means very few remain in the wild. And next is the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Previously called Zaire, the Democratic Republic of the Congo is the second largest country in Africa. It straddles the equator, so at the same time that it is spring in the north of the country, it's fall in the south. That's interesting. Simple but sturdy. In some parts of the country, young people earn their livelihood delivering goods using a reliable handmade vehicle called a chukudu. Sociable apes. Found only in the lush rainforests along the Congo River, these bonobo apes live in peaceful communities of 30 to 100 individuals. Musical Major home to more than 11 million people and growing rapidly. Kinshasa is the cradle of Congolese rumba dance music. Mount Nirigongo. This active volcano in the Great Rift Valley last erupted in 2002. A lake of lava has formed inside the volcano's crater. Ornate Trump. The tradition of the Vili people who live across Central Africa is to sculpt these unique drums mounted on top of intricately carved figures. It says he's sitting on a leopard. Be careful. Indi in I thought it said indigenous. It says ingenious. Ingenious fishermen. Near Kisangani, the Wangenya people catch fish in sieve-like baskets attached to poles suspended over Congo River rapids. That is pretty ingenious. That takes a lot of skill to make something like that. Next, we are going to check out Burundi. The small nation of Burundi borders Lake Tanganyika, a deep rift lake. The new capital, Jitega, is also the cultural center of the nation. Coffee and cotton are among the country's main products. There is a flag fact. Three stars represent the main ethnic groups of Burundi, Hutu, Tutsi, and Twa. The Rukege Highlands Forest Chameleon. This recently identified species of chameleon is unique to the dense forests of the Rugege Highlands in the northwest of the country. Commercial capital. A bustling port on Lake Tanganyika, Bunjumbura ships the country's produce to surrounding nations. Sacred drums. Beating it with his foot. That's interesting. Karyenda drums are sacred instruments in Burundi. Emblems of the country's historic kings, they are played at ceremonies such as weddings and funerals. And next we're going to Rwanda. Rwanda's hilly terrain includes the volcanic Virunga Mountains. Lush rainforests carpet the slopes, the habitat of many primate species, including chimpanzees, golden monkeys, and rare mountain gorillas. Flag fact. The sun represents the enlightenment of Rwanda's people. Powerful women. Women in Rwanda hold more power than women in any other country in the world, with 62% of seats in parliament. In 2020, the nation ranked sixth in the world for overall equality between men and women. There's the capital, Kigali. Another capital that's just right in the center. King's Palace. This beehive-shaped thatched building is a reconstruction of the Rwandan king's traditional residence in Nyanza near Nyambishindu, where the royal court settled in 1899. And next we're going to Uganda. Oops, <laughs> careful. 
Uganda lies between Lake Albert and Lake Edward to the north, and Lake Victoria, Africa's largest freshwater lake to the south. Mount Stanley in the Urunsori Range is Africa's third highest mountain. Let's see about Uganda. On the shores of Lake Victoria, Kampala, meaning Hill of the Impala, has spread over several hills on the shores of Lake Victoria. It is one of Africa's fastest growing cities. It's a sweet mountain gorilla. The country's rainforests are home to more than 450 rare mountain gorillas. Most live in Pwindi Impenetrable National Park in the southwest. Climate protest. Vanessa Nakate is a Ugandan activist bringing to the attention of the world the dangers of rising temperatures and drought on agriculture and food supply in Africa. Very important. Here's the Ruvensori Mountains. Astride the border of Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, this area of snow-capped peaks and glaciers is known as the Mountains of the Moon. How poetic. And here is Lake Victoria. This lake is shared by Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. Its waters teem with fish such as the Nile perch. And next we're going to go to Tanzania. Tanzania is a land of high mountains, lush coastal plains, savanna, and the Zanzibar Archipelago. The Serengeti National Park is known for its herds of migratory zebras and wildebeest, while the volcanic crater of Ngorongoro Park is home to rhinos and elephants. Let's see what we've got here. Here's Dar es Salaam. Overlooking the Indian Ocean, Dar es Salaam is the largest city and port of Tanzania. Its name means abode of peace in Arabic. The Maasai people. Around a million Maasai people live across Tanzania and Kenya. These nomadic hunters and cattle herders wear distinctive shuka blankets and jewelry. The black capped social weaver. Shrubland in East Africa is home to these gregarious birds. They live in colonies, building nests that hang from the branches of acacia trees. Tanzanite. The striking blue gemstone called tanzanite is very rare. It can be mined only in the Mirurani Hills near Arusha. Spice Island. Zanzibar was a long-time center for Indian, Persian, and Arab trade with the African continent still export spices such as cloves from its harbor. You can see it right here. There's Zanzibar. Mount Kilimanjaro. Very beautiful. Very distinctive mountain. At 19,341 feet, this dormant volcano is the highest peak in Africa. And next we're going to Kenya. Famous for its wildlife, Kenya sees the annual migration of millions of animals across the Maasai Mara, and the Great Rift Valley lakes attract flocks of birds. The capital, Nairobi, is a thriving modern city, and the port, Mombasa, is one of Africa's most multicultural cities. Oh, look at these sweet flamingos. They're the flamingos of Lake Bogoria. Lesser flamingos flock to this great rift valley lake near Nakuru to feed on brine shrimp and blue-green algae in the very salty waters. This food gives these birds their pink coloring. The Samburu people. In northern Kenya, the Samburu live as they always have by raising cattle, moving around to find grazing, and building mud and grass huts for shelter. Olympic runner. Kenyan athletes have often gained victory in distance running. David Rudisha has won two Olympic gold medals and holds a world record in the 800-meter race. Kiondo baskets. It's a 
pretty. I like that one. Kikuyu, Kamba, and Taita people weave decorative bags from sisal fibers, known as kiondos. These are used to carry market goods and store supplies. Geothermal power station. Kenya was the first country in Africa to build geothermal power stations. In the Great Rift Valley, these use energy stored inside Earth to generate power. And the Maasai Mara lions. Cute. Hundreds of lions live in prides in the Maasai Mara National Reserve, west of Nairobi. They live alongside buffalo, many species of antelope, and other big cats. Next, going to Angola. Angola is a large country rich in natural resources, including oil, minerals, and fertile farmland. Set back by many years of civil war, it is now one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. And here's Luanda. Angola's largest city sits on the Atlantic coastline. This thriving port city is the trading center of the country. Chokwe art. The Chokwe people of northeastern Angola, Congo, and Zambia are renowned for their ornately carved figurines, drums, and masks. Angolan Carnival. The country's annual carnival marks the end of the period before Lent. Dancers and musicians perform in parades watched by crowds. Palacio de Ferro. Designed by French architect Gustave Eiffel, this building was originally constructed in Paris before being dismantled and rebuilt in Luanda in 1902. Its name means Iron Palace. The red crested Turco. Turaco? I like Turaco. Let's go over that. It's so cute. Found only in the tropical forests of northern Angola, this colorful bird has a distinctive shrill song. I'll have to look that up and see what it's a beautiful bird. Look at all these colors. Oh, new favorite bird just dropped. And speaking of some of my faves, it's a pangolin. So cute. This is ten Temix ground pangolin. Pangolins are the world's only scaly mammal. This species is found throughout Southern Africa. And next, we're going to check out Zambia. This rugged country in Southern Africa has 20 national parks and large areas of protected forest, which provide a haven for its abundant wildlife. Zambia is named after its largest river, the Zambezi. Let's see what we've got here. Rally Ring. The Zambia International Motor Rally is a high-speed racing event that takes place every year. The tough course starts in Lusaka and heads north into the desert. Bat migration. It's a lot of bats. Let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Toward the end of each year, more than 10 million fruit bats descend on Kasanka National Park in northern Zambia. They migrate from forests in the Democratic Republic of the Congo to feast on the park's plentiful fruit tree. So each bat here is equal to 1 million bats. That's a lot of bats. Let's look at these Batonga baskets. The Batonga people live in farming villages around Lake Kariba. Women weave traditional baskets from palm leaves. So they're boiled first to make them soft. Here's the Zambezi River. This major river starts in Zambia and passes through six countries on its way to the Indian Ocean. Measuring 1,600 miles, it is the fourth longest river in Africa. These very colorful people are part of Circus Zambia. Founded to support vulnerable young people in Lusaka, 
This group teaches life skills as well as circus tricks and provides funding for education. Next, we're going to check out Namibia. Namibia is situated on the southwest coast of Africa. This vast country of deserts, mountains, and grasslands is almost entirely arid, meaning it is so dry that few plants can grow. It is one of the first countries to protect its environment by law. Here's a cheetah. With a population of more than 1,400 wild cheetahs, Namibia has the largest number of any country. The Cheetah Conservation Fund at Ochiwarongo protects these rare animals. There's Windhoek, the capital. Windy Corner. Herero dolls. Women of the Herero ethnic group make traditional dolls by hand, dressing them in decorative outfits that mimic their own colorful dress. Let's see how to pronounce this. Dead fly. Dead fly? I like dead fly. Silhouettes of long dead trees create a dramatic skyline against the red sands of dead fly, which means dead marsh. This is a white clay pan near Sosus, Sosus fly, the center of the country's dunes. Speaking of dunes, there's dune 7. Huge sand dunes run across the Namib Desert. The highest is Dune 7, measuring 1,256 feet tall. The Ovambo people. The largest ethnic group in Namibia, the Ovambo, make up more than half of the country's population. Next, we're going to Zimbabwe. This landlocked country has been at the heart of trading empires such as medieval Great Zimbabwe since the 11th century. It is known for the stunning scenery and wildlife of its ridged river valleys. Here's some Mopani worms. The large caterpillar of the emperor moth is a delicacy eaten in Zimbabwe, either sun-dried or fried in a tasty sauce. The flame lily. This vibrant red and yellow flower looks like flames. It is a protected species and the national flower of Zimbabwe. And gorgeous Victoria Falls. These are among the world's largest waterfalls, extending over 5,604 feet along the Zambezi River. To next, we're going to Malawi, the Great Rift Valley, where the rock makes up Africa divides, cuts through this long, narrow country. Formed in the rift, Lake Malawi, also known as Lake Nyasa, is one of Africa's great lakes. It is 360 miles long and 47 miles wide. Let's read about it. Lake Malawi. One of the largest lakes in Africa, Lake Malawi is home to more than 850 different species of colorful Sick, sick, sick lid fish. Never know how to pronounce that. Vibrant wraps. Many women in southern Africa traditionally wear the jitenge, a vivid patterned fabric worn as a sarong or a headdress. It is also fashioned into skirts, blouses, and dresses. I just noticed we have a flag fact. The national flag features a rising sun to symbolize the new dawn of freedom in Africa. Next, we're going to Botswana. Botswana is sometimes called the gem of Africa due to its many diamond deposits. A large part of the country is desert, but it also has a lush river delta, plains and plateaus, all home to a diverse range of Here's the Okavango River. Look at this guy. Wow. That's so fun. It's beautiful. The Okavango is 1,050 miles long and flows into the Kalahari Desert, forming a huge inland delta of marshland and floodplains. Here live some of the most endangered animals, such as rhinos and lions. Here's 
some meerkat mob found only in parts of southern Africa these small members of the mongoose family live in large colonies across Botswana's plains there's a termite mound of it now that's clever use the, the termite mounds to make an oven Abandoned yet sturdy termite mounds can be used as outdoor ovens for cooking bread and meat, since they are excellent for retaining heat. So they're, they're, they make a hole in the side to let the smoke out. Here's the beautiful Kalahari Desert. Kalahari sands spread across 84% of Botswana. This desert is the second largest in Africa, of course after the Sahara. The capital city, the largest city in Botswana, Gaborone, is also the center of government. As well as many cultural sites, the city has a game reserve within its limits. There it is right there on the map. The San people. For 20,000 years, these indigenous people have led a nomadic lifestyle in the Kalahari Desert, where they use their hunting, fishing, and foraging skills to survive. Next, we're going to Mozambique. With vast stretches of beautiful coastline, Mozambique is famed for its beaches as well as its fertile countryside and rich mineral resources. The Zambezi River runs through the middle of the country. Let's see what we have here. It's mangrove conservation. Saltwater loving mangrove trees form an important swamp ecosystem. Many are found near the capital Maputo, and Mozambique has committed to conserving these habitats. The Maputo Railway Station. The classically designed building is notable for its grand style. Built in the 20th century, it has a large dome, striking green exteriors, and ornate Peri peri chilies. Small but spicy, these peppers are farmed in Mozambique. They are mixed with garlic and other ingredients to make the popular peri peri sauce. Wild warthogs. This large pig species roams the grasslands of the Gorongosa National Park, along with a wide variety of other wildlife. Pristine coastline. Mozambique's 1,550-mile-long coastline features coral reefs, pure white sand beaches, and tropical islands. Star athlete. Mozambican sprinter Maria Mutola is a three-time world champion in the 800-meter race and has taken part in six Olympic Games. There's the Corn Corn National Park right there, where these Sweet little word And next, I don't want to skip a page. There we go. Because the next one we're going to is South Africa. Can't skip South Africa. At the southern tip of the African continent, South Africa is known today for its diverse culture, a rainbow nation with 11 official languages. It is one of the richest African nations only country in the world to have three capitals, Pretoria for administration, Cape Town for lawmaking, and Bloemfontein for justice. Let's see these little facts over here. Geography. South Africa is dominated by high plateau fringed by grasslands, deserts, and narrow coastal plains. History. The system of racial segregation known as apartheid ended in 1994 when Nelson Mandela became the first black president. Culture The vibrant cultural mix fuses many traditions in literature and the music of artists such as singer Miriam Makeba. Natural wonders The dramatic Drakensberg Mountains contrast with the Contrast with the lush garden route coastline west of Port Elizabeth. I feel like I read that sentence wrong. Contrast with the lush garden route coastline west. Anyway, weirdly worded sentence. Wildlife. South Africa. 
Africa's home to a rich variety of wildlife, including more than 200 mammal species and 800 bird species. Let's see what we have over here. First off, the father of the nation, revolutionary statesman and Nobel Peace Prize winner Nelson Mandela is an icon of modern democratic South Africa. He was known as Madiba, meaning father of the nation. Digging for diamonds. The country is one of the leading producers of gem quality diamonds, which are excavated in seven major mines. The Ndebele people. Traditionally skilled at many crafts, the Ndebele people produce colorful and patterned beadwork, mats, and dolls. Cosmopolitan city. First inhabited thousands of years ago, Cape Town its natural harbor has long attracted seafarers. Today, the city is a thriving mix of cultures. There's Table Mountain right there. Cape Town's like my top five bucket list, but and not for what you think. It's because there's some great white sharks there that I want to see. I'm such a really weird shark nerd. <laughs> I love sharks. Kruger National Park. Giraffes, elephants, lions, leopards, rhinos, and buffaloes are among the animals that roam the country's largest national park. King Protea, Protea, not sure, but it's, it looks like dragon fruit. This tropical flowering plant native to South Africa is the national flower. Here's the Gosa people. The Gosa people are the second largest ethnic group. Historically linked with the Cape Town area, they live in all parts of South Africa. Here's the Springboks. The South African Rugby Union team won the 2019 Rugby World Cup, their third win since 1995, when one team, one country symbolized national unity. The Zulu people. The largest ethnic group is the Zulu people. Traditionally, male warriors wore animal fur and feathers. The, there's a movie called Zulu about the British trying to take over the area and the Zulu fighting them back. Oh my gosh, that movie's incredible. The cinematography, the, uh, the, the tension in that movie, it's, it's almost like a horror movie. It's the, it's the same level of tension as like a, a slasher movie. Or checking out Eswatini. Eswatini was known as Swaziland until the king renamed it in 2018. One of Africa's smallest countries, it has two capitals, Mbabane and Lobamba, home to the parliament and royal family. Its reserves are known for big mammals and birds. Swazi Cultural Village. In this living museum near Lobamba, the traditional Swazi way of life is on display in huts containing local artifacts. Village people introduce visitors to their customs. Here's Sipepe Rock, you can see right there. At 4,882 feet tall, Sipepe Rock is the world's largest granite dome. It is nicknamed Bald Rock. And Manzini Market. The best known market in Eswatini is held weekly in Manzini. Local sellers trade handicrafts such as painted fabrics, wooden sculptures, woven baskets, and pottery. Next, we're going to Lesotho. Located entirely more than 4,590 feet above sea level, Lesotho is known as the Kingdom in the Sky. Surrounded by South Africa on all sides, the country has a dramatic landscape of mountains and rivers. The spiral aloe, isn't that beautiful? Is that a Fibonacci sequence? Looks like it. The spiny leaves of this succulent plant grow in a spiral-shaped pattern. It is native to the Drakensberg Mountains. Basoto blankets. The Basoto people handcraft traditional woolen blankets that they wear for warmth in the cold winters of the Sotos Highlands. 
horseback rider. Many mountain villages can be reached only on horseback. Riders often wear a conical basoto hat woven from reeds. Oh, you can see some right here too. Really cool looking. It says here they're playing oil can guitars and drums on the accordion. <laughs> this is, oh, that's probably a great sound. Next we're going to Madagascar. Situated off Africa's southeast coast, Madagascar is the world's fifth largest island first settled around 500 CE. Its ethnically diverse people came from Asia and Africa. Its isolation and rainforest habitats have allowed unique flora and fauna to evolve. Vanilla pods. More than two-thirds of the global supply of vanilla is produced in Madagascar. Madagascan wildlife. Wildlife found only on the island includes about 40 species of lemur, about half of the world's chameleons, and a large moth called the comet moth. There's King Julian. Colorful llamas. The Sokolava people are one of many Malagasy ethnic groups. Traditionally, men and women wear a wraparound cloth called a lamba. Solar energy. Power supplies are limited on the island, but year-round sunshine means solar power plants can harness the abundant sunlight to generate renewable energy. And here's Grand Didier's baobab tree. Baobab, baobab. The trunk of this rare tree can be as wide as 10 feet. Humans and animals depend on baobab trees for water, food, and shelter. Next, because we're still not done. There's still a couple island nations we have to visit before we wrap this up. The first one is Seychelles, which that's my favorite flag in the world. That's an A plus flag right there. An archipelago of 115 granite and coral islands off Africa's east coast, the Seychelles are settled in the 18th century continent's smallest nation. It has a diverse population and is known for its beaches and reefs. Let's see, over right here we have the Coco de Mer. Nicknamed the double coconut, the fruit of the Coco de Mer palm grows only in the Seychelles. The islanders eat this rare nut or gift it to one another, but never sell it. like something, doesn't it? Man-eating plant. Oh no, it's not. It's a meat-eating plant. I was about to say. Wow, okay. A meat-eating plant. The only species of its kind that grows in the Seychelles. Purville's pitcher plant is carnivorous. Its leaves form a deadly trap for insects that fall inside. Dazzling sand. Regularly named one of the world's most breathtaking beaches, Anse Sostalchon has swaying palms, rocky boulders, soft sands, and clear, shallow waters. Here's the Seychelles blue pigeon. Found in the dense forests on many of the country's islands, this pretty pigeon feeds on tropical fruits. Capital of the island capital city of Victoria on Mahe Island has leafy palms and a mix of architectural styles, including the Victoria Clock Tower, which was built in 1903. You can see it right here on Mahe. And here's the Andabra giant tortoise. The Andabra Atoll is home to this rare tortoise. It can weigh up to 550 pounds and live for 150 years. Next, we're going to Mauritius. The picturesque island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean has more than 105 miles of spectacular coastline. Volcanic mountains blanketed in rainforest rise up steeply in the center. Underwater waterfall. You can see it right here. Going down that way. Sand in shallow waters near the Lamorne Peninsula carried along by 
by currents and dropped it back down to the seabed, creating an effect like a waterfall beneath the waves. Award-winning architecture, designed by the Mauritian architect Jean-Francois Koenig, the Mauritius commercial bank building in Port Louis has won awards for its unique design. I believe this is going to be the last country in Africa. Oop. I think we've hit them all. We certainly have. It's Comoros. The three volcanic islands of Comoros in the Indian Ocean are known as the perfumed islands because of the abundant, fragrant tropical plants. The trade in spices such as vanilla and cloves has brought people from many continents to settle in Comoros. Sweet fragrance. The scented yellow flowers of the Yilang Yilang tree grow all year round in the Comoros Islands. They are used to make perfumes and essential oils. You can see the capital there, Moroni, on Grand Comor. Decorative clothes. Comoran women traditionally wear dresses called shiromani. These colorful patterned fabrics are worn draped over the body together with headscarves. It says the sandalwood paste and sandalwood and coral called Nsinsana was used to decorate the face. The Grand Mosque de Moroni. It's French Grand Mosque de Moroni. Muslims gather for daily prayers at this 19th century mosque. Many Comorans are of Arab or Persian descent. All right, we've made it through every country in Africa. Africa is the most countries out of any continent, so we made it. It's as of this date, January 2022, this is now my longest video by like 10 minutes. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still awake after all this, leave it in the comments. Congratulations, you powered through that. Thank you again, and I hope you have a 